Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for November 28th, 2012. I'm Matt Gradwall from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com and you can find me on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. Um, if you're watching the video and you want to participate in the chat, head over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom and log in with your Twitter ID. Um, with me again tonight is my buddy Chris Wong. Say hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Uh, Where can people Chris find Wong. you on the web, bud? Uh, you can find me in Port Moody, or if you're not so local, you can connect with me on Twitter at Flair Woodworks, or check out my website and blog at flairwoodworks.com. Cool. So tonight's topic is um, what is on your Christmas wish list, um, specifically woodworking related. We don't want to know about the Furby that you want, um, or the Barbie, or the Justin Bieber album. Um, but before we get to that, um, Chris, what has been on your bench lately? Um, molding planes. Um, More molding planes. So lots of orders from Woodworking in America? Um, we got some, some orders from there. Um, we weren't pushing for sales. It was just a promo event for us. We are just trying to spread the word on the West Coast. Like we did the show last year in Cincinnati, of course, and we wanted something on the West Coast. Gotcha. But yeah, lot, lots of lots of orders. Um, I'm getting near. We were hoping to get them out uh, right around the end of the month, and we're going to be really close for that. So both Garth and I are pushing hard to get them done. Cool, cool. Um, tell tell me again about your your planes. You you do hollows and rounds and a rabbit plane. Hollows and rounds and a rabbit plane currently. Okay. Yeah. Um, they're a top escapement. They're they're a design that we we came up with. They're, they're a symmetrical design rather than side escapement. Mm -hmm. So they can be used left to right handed for when you're turning around for reversing grain. It's also a wider grip, so you get a more ergonomic uh, body. So what? It's uh, easier to grip. Cool. And are these laminated or beach? Uh, <laughs> they could be both. Um, okay. They're they're birch and they're yellow birch and they're laminated. Okay. Cool. Very cool. So you've been getting plenty of shop time. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, then I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, you're the you're the other extremity, aren't you, Matt? Yeah, I'm the other extreme. So what's on my Christmas list is time at home, because we've been traveling a lot, um, and I have another trip coming up next Wednesday. Um, so I will miss Woodchat next Wednesday. Um, but time at home, and specifically time in the shop. Um, the shop's kind of messy, and I haven't done any work um, in the shop since uh, I worked on that guitar um, with my uh, with my buddy. Um, I do have um, people who want projects, so it's not that I don't have projects that I need to get done. I do have my own projects I want to get done. I need to do some tool storage, um, and I have um, a former coworker who wants to take some. Uh, woodworking lessons, so cool. I'm just hoping to get some shop time, and I might, like I told you before we started broadcasting, I might start um, tonight and just, if I have to stay up late, that's fine, but I just, I need to get time in the shop before I start to go crazy, because yeah. at work, I work on software all day, and that's not real, mm -hmm. and um, I need to balance that with working on something that I can hold in my hands, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll probably, even if I just put 20 tools away, uh, I'll feel much better. So um, so what's on your Christmas list from a woodworking perspective? Not much, I imagine. Not not too much. I'm off to do some thinking as we as we go on here. Um, not a whole lot. I'd like a, a pneumatic sanding drum. That's one thing I would like. Just a small, like a one inch, one and a quarter inch one I can put on the end of a flex shaft. That's the only thing I think of really. To put onto your drill press or? On sure, well, in a in a flex shaft. Okay, okay. Um, I'm working on like a five foot tall sculpture. I've been sanding, and um, yeah. a pneumatic sanding drum would be perfect for the contours. Yeah. Now you put your table uh, up for sale. Um, yes, I did. How is that going? Um, had lots of support saying, "Hey, good luck in your sale," and love the <laughs> table. Uh, no, no interested buyers uh, asking me about it yet. But it's only been... It's only been a week or so, right? I don't, I don't think it's been a week yet. 
Okay. I could be wrong, but I think it's only been a few days. I think it was Saturday. Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, I think. Sunday evening, I think. And you gave it a name. Relationship study. Relationship study. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's actually a whole video that I produced um, about why it's called relationship study. You can check it out at uh, flywoodworks.com. It's on the on the home page. Cool. Very cool. Um, so you really don't need any tools. Not even clamps. Not really. Not oh, really. Cool. There's, there's a cool. table there if, if you guys haven't seen it. Um, yeah, funny story about clamps. Um, one year I asked for um, asked for some six inch clamps, and mm -hmm. what I got were spring clamps, six inches long. Ah, <laughs> oh, so close. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's why I send Amazon links when I send my Christmas links. Christmas links. Yeah. I usually ask. I usually don't ask for anything, but I usually don't expect uh, or particularly want woodworking tools for Christmas. I like to pick them up myself. So yeah, I guess I could. Do like you do, send out specific items. Yeah. Um, now that I think about it, if there was one woodworking tool I would want, um, it'd be a lathe um, with some Ooh. easy wood uh, wood turning wow. tools. Um, turning is something that I've been wanting to get into a little bit more, even if it's um, just at a basic level to explore. Um, different forms um, and uh, I took the seminar on turning at Woodworking in America in um, California um, it was taught by the Easy Wood Tools guys they've obviously taught a lot they, you, you can tell people who've taught a lot because um, they've really got it down and they can really get a lot of ideas across um, in an hour and they can get them across very very well mm -hmm. um, but turning just looks like a blast so I don't think I'm going to be getting one um, this Christmas. I don't even know if I'm going to ask just because I don't have anywhere to put it right now. But um, turning, no. is probably the, turning is probably the next thing I'm going to want to get into. Are you talking a full-size lathe or just a, a mini? Well, I want to be able to do table legs. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, you can get you need a small lathe and an extender, right? Yeah, a lathe and an extender. I. I don't think I'm going to be doing big bowls or vessels, so, mm -hmm. um, but mostly it would be for legs, handles, chair legs, things like that. Um, so, um, and I don't know if you've seen the Easy Wood Tools, but they're pretty, they're pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. Mark, I'm going um, like to get caught up on the Twitter chat real quick. Sure. Okay. So I read that Mark Cherry wants a tenon saw, and I'm, I'm in agreement with him there. Um, the only thing is this, the saws, the tenons that I do, like a six-inch tenon's kind of on the small side. I'd go for, I think, eight-inch. And, yeah, Vic, you suggested the Beastmaster. I think that'll cut up to a six-inch tenon, mm -hmm. very close to it. And I want it to exceed that. So I'm not sure whether it means I'm looking at a backless saw or what. Um, I have to do some more research. Gotcha. Scott. Um, somebody had asked um, before Woodchat had started, they had asked a question. So I'm going to repost the question and then we'll get some answers. Um, it's about uh, cold storage of tools, I believe. Mm. Yeah, Scott Meek's looking for a bandsaw. I think a good bandsaw is indispensable. You know, um, I took the bandsaw class from Michael Fortune last year. There's a lot you can do with a pretty good basic bandsaw, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you have in your shop, then, Matt? Uh, I have got the Grizzly Ultimate 14-inch. Okay. And I've got some of the um, wood slicer blades from Highland Woodworking, and they're great. Mm hmm um, but I make my father-in-law um, refold my bandsaw blades because he, he just looks so cool doing it, and he's good yeah. at it. He okay. used to do it. He used to do it for a butcher. Hmm. 
this is the and then they're, they're unless he coiled up. Yeah. And he the way he does it is just it's like Jackie yeah. Chan folding a bandsaw blade, so Yeah. I can I can do that sometimes. Uncoiling them is a different story. Yeah, he's the ba- what Michael Fortune says is just throw them out on the grass. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the question from the from um, it was from East Design, and it, it was um, about 14 hours ago. The question was asked was mm. starting to thinking about protecting his bench and power tools against the cold. Um, any tips? So I'm not no sure if the cold is a concern. It's really the condensation that that can cause. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um. What do I do in my shop? Well, I'm pretty lucky. I have a um. You can't see it from here. It's kind of behind the miter saw, but I have a um. It looks like a little wood stove, but it's a gas stove, so my shop's heated. Mm-hmm. Um. Now that the leak is fixed, um, it's fairly dry. Um, the wall and the walls are insulated, and it's fairly well lit. You can see I have tons of tons of lights on the ceiling. So, mm-hmm. um, but I think the you know the biggest thing is is uh, wax them and oh. use that uh, what is it? I think it's called CRC rust re- rust remover, or but it's mm-hmm. more like a WD forty type protectant uh, as well. Uh, back on the topics of band saws, have you ever used a resaw king or seen a resaw king in action? Is that I, the Laguna place? Yes. Yeah, I've got two of them. Oh, you, the, the car, <laughs> they're carbide tipped, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you, can you get those resharpened? Yeah, no, Laguna will do it for you. You send it to I've, Laguna? Yeah, I've never actually been able to get a, a perfect. Uh, a perfect surface off that off that blade. I've seen. I've heard of other people doing it. Uh, Vic apparently can do it. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure what I need to change, but I don't. I don't really need that glue surface off it anyhow. I get little to, little ripples in it. Did you have to like worry yeah. about draft? I just set it once and set it and forget I, it. Yeah, I don't change the blade very often. Well, I don't change the blade ever. I'm kind of uh, too lazy to change that that blade. Um, good uh, post here from James about storing your tools in the co- cold. Um, it might be a good idea to bring batteries in. Right. Um, now that's dependent on the type of bat- battery, isn't it? I don't know. I don't I know. I believe that NICAD is less sensitive to the cold. Mm. I think or is it lithium? I can't remember. Uh, I, I I remember that there's something about different batteries uh, being able to tolerate temperatures better than others. Um, uh, I don't I don't know the difference between the batteries as far as cold. So if I was in a cold shop, I would just probably bring them all in. Yeah, probably on a battery. Um. You know, the other thing is um, if you have finishes or chemicals, yeah, uh, a lot of those have temperature tolerances. Um, what else might have a temperature tolerance that you'd need to worry about? Glue? Glue. Any liquids, you got to be uh, yeah. careful of that freeze-thaw cycle. That's, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, electronics and liquids, and then the rest would, the rest you'd have to, you'd, you'd be more concerned about... Um, um. The heat and cold of the uh, causing condensation. What about fluorescent tubes? Some of those don't like the cold temperatures, right? Or is it the ballast or something? Uh, like? Well, I don't know if it's the I don't know if it's the tubes. I don't think it's the tubes. I think they have these. I think they have ballasts that are sensitive, and all the new ones are rated as uh, cold start. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. James says it definitely sh- shortens the life of the NICAD, So. Yeah, and Vic says yeah. they all batteries dislike the cold, so um, it kind of makes sense. It's a it's a chemical reaction. A lot of times there is a a liquid in those. 
even if it's mm -hmm. even if it's a paste type liquid. Yeah. How so? Your your shop's heated by just a single source, Matt. Yeah. So. Um, you got a big shop up there. How does it? Well, it's a it's a three car heat? garage. Um, when I when I'm working on a project, I pull my wife's car out, and then all my a lot of my tools are on wheels, and they spread out. Let me see if I can actually show you the. See how long this cord is. Maybe the knot. No, you can't see it. But I guess I could uh, hold on a second. Vic says that it's the tubes, uh, the T5 tubes, which would be inch and a quarter, I do believe. So you can um, see, my, um, see my little stove okay. right there? Yep. So it's gas and it's on a thermostat, so okay. it keeps yeah. everything keeps everything toasty because I do get to do most of my woodworking in the winter. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. Do you have a fan on the gas stove? No, I've thought about getting one, um, or or at least putting one near there. Um, typically, if I need to warm up the shop quick, I'll take the fan, the box fan that I use for my spray booth setup, and just put it over there. Um, but they have these fans that will sit right on the stove that aren't that don't even have a motor, mm -hmm. and they just use the heat going up to turn the blades. I don't know how well they work, but and they're pretty expensive, so I'll probably just get a cheap little um, oscillating fan and, and, and put it over there, but it, it really hasn't been much of a problem. <clears throat> and the air moves in here pretty pretty good, especially when I have the air cleaner on, the air scrubber on. Right. All right, let's um, check the uh, chat room again. Yeah, so Vic commented that it's the tubes that don't have the cold. Um, the T5s, which are metric. Um, he says they're about the size of your pinky. They like cold better than the T8s, which are eight quarter, or sorry, eight eighths, so two inch diameter. Um, but both are pretty good now for tolerating cold. You know, Vic had asked me earlier what type of light fixtures I had. So, hold on a sec. I'm gonna check real quick. <laughs> I've got a friend who's lighting up his. He's got a two car garage for his shop. And he's currently got a couple flushes in the ceiling, but what he's doing is he's buying a whole bunch of LEDs and wiring a grid into his ceiling. So he's going to have completely LEDs even off. light. LEDs, yeah. Well, it'll be energy efficient. Um, Two-car garage, he's got them, I think, every foot. There's a lot of LEDs there. I don't know how efficient it'll be, but it'll be bright and it'll be evenly lit. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he, how it looks with it, uh, with the LEDs on. Okay, Victor, I have an answer for you. I have T8s. And, and uh, do you have daylight bulbs, or do you have the standard cool white? Uh, they're called they're called star coat or something like that. Okay. Um, let me find out. I've had them for quite a long time. Oh, boy. You're going to make me get up on that ladder again, aren't you? Dale had commented that yeah, he's, got a, he's got a small studio and he's able to to heat it with just a space heater and uh, track lighting. That's pretty good. Oh, the track lighting and incandescent lights are warm enough. Yeah. Oh, and he's got a, he's got a giant window in front of his bench, which is awesome. And I've got so, nine um, eight foot long fixtures. Nine eight. Oh yeah, eight footers. Okay. Those are awkward. Eight foot but, long glass tube. Uh. Oh, those look like. Those look like eight footers, don't they? Well, either the fours or eights, probably. I guess they could be fives, but no, these are long ones. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, hold on. I'm gonna check one more thing on these things. Let's see. 
Uh, Mark, Mark Curie has commented that he, he warms his shop with a small kerosene heater and he's looking to get a small a sawdust burning stove. Um, I'm curious if, that, if a sawdust burning stove is different than a wood burning stove. And if so, how? Let's see here what I have. One thing I have heard about wood burning stoves is one, I guess there's a fire fire risk having the open flame. Um, the other thing I've heard as a negative is that you get the highs and lows. When it's on, it's really nice and toasty. When it's um, off, it's cold, and you, you can get uh, condensation issues that way. Yeah, the fluctuations in temperature really really cause the problem. So let's see what I have here. Here's what I've got, Victor. Too long. Sorry, Chris. I'm trying to get caught up on this. Sure. These are the color temp 3500 color temperature. Neutral lamp. I think Vic wants him the make and model. That's all he needs, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm putting in. I'm, I'm copying that in for him right now. They're one inch. Okay. That's the spec. Yeah, for me, the kerosene heater, I would not want to have to reload with kerosene. Um, I think a sawdust burning stove, I don't know if that's similar to a wood burning or a wood pellet stove or not. Yeah, and there's a link there from um, Relax, Relax Stoves, uh, Mark here just posted. Okay. Relaxstoves.co.uk. Okay. Wood and saw, sawdust burning. That's my screen share here. Oh, and they're on Twitter too. They're on Twitter. Maybe they'll even join us. Yeah. So, which model are you looking at, uh, Mark? So all the way from 4 kilowatts to 24 kilowatts I'm, I'm seeing here. Wow, those oh, just look like they look just like garbage cans. <laughs> I'm sure there's a bit more to them than that. <laughs> I know, but that's what they look like. Loaded, loaded yeah. with fuel through an access plate in the top, convenient cleaning hatch, safety guard. How do you light them? Um... I'm trying to find an about page or teach There's a how does it work link over on the right. Okay. Right. And there's a blog and um, Vic, I believe Scott was asking uh, the reason why uh, 4100 or 5000 degrees Kelvin is better for the light bulb. That's my interpretation. Mark says he's looking at a middle sized one. Sawdust is one thing I have a lot of. That is pretty interesting. Wow. Um, when burning hardwood off cuts, the three larger models will last through the night without attention. But so it's, it it doesn't have a, like an electronic ignition. You still need to you still need to light the thing, right? Okay. A ductless heat pump, yeah, that'd be nice. I just go out to the shop and I tough it out, and then I go back into my bench room where it's nice and warm. 
and then warm up, and then I go back out to the machine shop. Hey, underscore funk is here. Hey. It has to do with scotopics. You see better in a wider light. Huh. Well, someday I will upgrade my light bulbs, but hopefully the best way to, right. the, the way I'll upgrade my light bulbs is by upgrading my shop. I'm trying to not put too much um, money specifically into the shop itself. Mm -hmm. um, stuff that I can move someday when I move and get a shop, absolutely, but the the light fixtures themselves are are here, and I'm not going to take them with me, so. Which way do you garage storage space? Um, they are that way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a power outage for about four or five hours or something a couple of days ago, and I was just able to open up my south-facing doors and work with the, that light. No, I think mine face north. Hmm. Um, Northern exposure. Yeah. <laughs> that way. And wait a minute. No, they face which, that way. Which way am I facing right now? You're facing forward. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they face north. They face north. Yeah. I'm facing this way. Mixing Maybe colors and stains in more relaxed. neutral. Oh, that's a good point. Mixing, mixing colors and stains in more neutral daylight. We'll give you better reference. Kelvin K equals color temperature light. Yeah. The higher, the more toward the blue spectrum, the lower toward the red spectrum. Well, you we learn something every day. Yeah. And uh, the comment about mixing stain, you have to also pay attention to uh, where the piece will be displayed or kept. It's going to be kept in a room with incandescent light bulbs. Yeah. And you mix your stain in daylight, and you might get something you don't want. Yeah, and the color is going to change over time anyway, so it's it's a little bit yeah. it's a little bit tough chasing that. The shade itself won't, the tint won't change. I don't, I wouldn't imagine any yeah. Over time. Yeah, you think so? The tint. I can imagine. I can see it getting darker or lighter, but not the tint. I don't think. Right. Yeah, it'll get darker or lighter, especially based on uh, UV. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you're not going to get a brown turn into a purple or a green. I, I would imagine. Only happens with purple heart. Yeah, unless the unless the under, underlying wood does. So people, tell us what is on your Christmas wish list for tools. Yeah, I want to hear. I want to get some ideas. I don't have. So do a I. Lot. You've got your. You just got a whole bunch of a hand tools there, right? Last week, Matt? Week before? Yeah, a couple weeks ago, my brother gave me a bunch of stuff, including the Peacemaker. Yes, the slide. <laughs> which I have to do a lot of work on, but um, yeah, there's just, I just have piles everywhere, and I just want to get organized and. Oh, great. No, I'm. Take stuff out of my pocket because I'm hitting the. Hit the car. <laughs> yeah. Hitting the cars, um, but there's just so much stuff I have to get, I have to get, just done, just absolutely done around yeah. here. So, yeah. uh, <clears throat> Vic just got a hot pipe bending uh, set up from Santa. I he saw says. that. Yeah, he made it with yeah. a torch and some pipe, and it looked pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds like he's gonna make some uh, tongs. I think it was right. It was spoons and tongs. Yeah, I, I heard thir thirteen pairs of tongs. I think it was. Christmas stuff, huh? Hot pipe, bit, hot pipe bending is a lot of fun. It's an easy technique to learn. Um, easy to learn takes a while to master, though, of course. Yeah. But it's, it's a really fun, uh, quick, kind of instant gratification woodworking technique. Yeah. Um, I can't remember where I saw Perhaps. the video. I can't remember where I saw the video, but it was um, a guy who did hot pipe vending in a rural area. He was making spoons and tongs and baskets and household things, 
and he would um, prep the stock on one day and then just put it in a bucket full of water overnight and then come back the next day and do it and keep a wet rag over the pipe. And he worked pretty quick. He worked very quick. The tongs are for practice. He's going to be doing lamps long term. Cool. Very cool. Do you have a design to share? Yeah, Vic, I want to see what you're doing here. Vic had an interesting comment that he finds uh, more radical bends have less spring back than a gentle, a shallow bend. That is interesting. I, I wonder if it's because you, you take the fibers past a certain breaking point where they don't spring back. Mm -hmm. Could be. That's, that's pretty interesting. Um, when I've done really tight bends, what I do is I hold it in that position for longer. I let it cool down a bit more. So that's maybe part of it. Not sure. And of course, uh, Vic attended a class with, oh, um, not Mark Levin. Was it Mark Levin? I can't believe I can't remember his name. Um, Vic, who, who did you take that class with? I'm going to find it before. Uh, it's going to bug me. Um, Seth, Seth, um, uh, what's his last name? Wants a new, James Roland. wants a new bandsaw and Roland. In the shop. Seth Roland, yes, I got it. Um, a while, a while ago, Vic shared a picture of one of the things that they made in the class. This is so we can build it up. Pretty neat piece. I Ithacus, I believe it was called. There's one picture. Another angle. Cool shapes, cool lines in there. Let's see here. And uh, wow, Vic, was that, that is very cool. Was that done on a hot pipe bending, Vic? I, I'd imagine the base was done by hot pipe and the top. Um, maybe it was maybe sawn with the bandsaw to cut those slits and then. And then wedge, wedges and then in the slit. Wedges dri driven in, maybe. That's cool. Um, I'm going to drop a link to the chat. I remember there. seeing this link. This was very cool. That was very cool. There's not a lot of people out there saying what they want for Christmas. Do people really have everything they need and they don't want? Oh, Wood Shaver would like to take a, a carving class. Mark Cherry wants to take a carving yeah. class. Well, then you need some uh, carving tools. Mm -hmm. The Mary May carving class at Woodworking America was pretty, pretty amazing. Pipe bending to make small scale design models as well. This was laminate bending, okay. That's kind of cool. One with tubing. Laminate bending with tubing, I don't... Maybe you can explain that one to us, Vic. Vic, come into the hangout and explain it to us. Opaque acrylic. Yeah, I'd like to work with some uh, different materials to acrylic. Um, I've got the shelf... I deconstructed that I started a while ago. I, I poured that casting a week and a half ago or something. Yeah, how'd that go? Uh, the pour went pretty well. Um, I think I might have made it worse by trying to vibrate out bubbles when I actually introduced more bubbles and they didn't have enough time to get out before it, was, it thickened. So um, if I were to do it again, I think I'd just pour did and then use the, uh, uh, Did you use the sander as the vibrator? I did. And you ended up introducing more bubbles than re than you removed. Well, I'm getting a lot of glare so. off the top of my. Does it doesn't really make sense in my head, but it seemed that that was what happened. It's 
surgical tubing. Okay, so he's so they're. I don't know how do you get the shape still. I think the surgical tubing was used was um, as a clamp. As a clamp, wind, wind it wind it around the the laminations, and then to get the shape. Hmm. Got a question for you, Vic. Um, he's taking off. Is he? Yeah, he's got to go in. Okay. So what are you going to do about that casting and the, and the bubbles? Yeah, uh, not a whole lot I can do. Um, can I don't. Or? I don't think I can drill into them and open them up and then fill them. I could try that. I'll probably just leave it. I'll did have you, to. Did you have surface bubbles at all? Um, yeah, on, the I, smooth and yeah flat. I, I did on on the surface which is actually the bottom so okay um, I haven't actually had a chance to go back and check on it so w when it gets to that point I'll yeah figure it out he says you glue the laminate bend it into the shape and then wrap it with tubing to hold it okay that makes sense so basically the surgical tubing is a gigantic rubber band clamp yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense. I could see how that would work. Yeah, I haven't done any um, lamination like uh, Cl Todd Clippinger does with the vacuum press stuff. I haven't done any of that. Right. I think the next thing I want to get into before I get into that is turning. Um, Shannon, um, Shannon is supposed to make me some new uh, vice handles. I think I heard it before. But that's been going on for probably over a year. So I think it might be faster if I get um, a lathe and some easy wood tools and turn my own handles. So Shannon, if you ever watch this, please, please. I even made a PayPal donation to him with a hint as the comments. <laughs> How about a spoke shave, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got a good spoke shave, but... Um, and I could, and that would work. Um, but if I'm going to make my own handles, I think it's a good excuse to buy a lathe to make two little handles. <laughs> That's why I actually bought a lathe so I could make uh, knobs and knobs yeah. for my hand planes and handles for chisels and um, files or whatever. I just posted a link um, to a piece oh. called Why Not. Yeah. And I'm looking at it, it's pretty cool. Are you screen sharing? Um, yeah, I will be. Here we go. So this is a bench, and it's basically plywood that he's bent and formed in this shape. It comes up and it spirals. You can see how it moves. That is very cool. I can understand how you get the first, the bench part of the bend, but the rest of it, I don't have the foggiest clue. Yeah, that's... Uh, There's a couple other pictures here. I'll have to talk to Vic when he's got some more time to see if he's got some insight into this. I mean, it almost looks like a gigantic steam bend. <laughs> I, I don't know how you would do that. Yeah. I don't have a clue. Hmm. Um, Mark Cherry is recommending that Richard Raffin books for turning to you, Matt. For turning? For turning. And his videos, too, apparently. Oh, really? Well, then maybe that's what I'll get for Christmas. Before I get a lathe, is I'll get... Yeah, I'll that's get, a good uh, way to go. But, you know, I, I thought of another reason why I need a, a lathe is to make a new handle for this baby. Yes. Because yep. this, one, this one's cracked at the end here. And uh, I think I need a nice, a nice handle for this. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. This looks like somebody was beating the hell out of it with a hammer. Um, I think before I go too crazy on that, though, I've got to figure out how good that steel is. I think it, yeah. it, look, it looks like somebody painted it with um, silver spray paint, honestly. 
And so the whole thing probably just needs to be cleaned up. But it's old, 1837. Hmm. That, that's, that's not when it was made, obviously. I think that's when the company was founded, but... New handle for that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I'm, I made one for mine. That's just a, a socket handle, right? Yeah. Yeah, just a socket handle. Dale's taking off. Good night, Dale. Let's see. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Uh, yeah now, is that number 51? Is that the shooting plane? <laughs> That's the one. The, yeah. like, the one that comes in its own wooden box and weighs like eight pounds. Pro sounds about right. It's got um, the right angle. It's got the, the, the toad at, the, at an angle. It's the right-handed one. Yeah. Do they have a left uh, hand though? Ang angled blade. I think they're working on it. Um, as of last year, they were. Uh, James is going to the Lee Nielsen event, so have fun. Um, those are fun, yeah. Those usually end up costing, costing me a little bit of money. Yeah. Do you know, James, if there's anyone else attending the show besides Lee Nielsen? Because those are the ones that really get interesting. Uh, the last show I was at... Um, the last Lee Nielsen show, they had uh, Conrad Sauer there. Spent the whole day there. Did he really? Yep. Um, Sauer and Steiner, right? Uh, well, yeah, that, that's the company, but just just uh, Conrad was there. Right, but that's the company. Yes, Sauer and Steiner. Yeah. Yeah, they make beautiful infill planes and. Yeah. So, did you have that. thousands of dollars of cash on you that day? How many did you buy? Did you buy a six pack of them? I wanted his. I want. I want. Well, I want his K seven, which he hasn't made yet. Oh, I've seen that. He's got the K thirteen out, which I love. Love the lines, but I'm looking for a smaller plane. So, um, let's see if I find a picture of that. Here's the website here. Sauer and Steiner. That's Conrad Sauer and Joe Steiner. Uh, Joe's kind of the silent partner. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe a little of your price range. Yeah, what does that plane cost, Matt? Is it five hundred dollars? I think. For oh, for the fifty-one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Let me go okay. check. It's. I mean, for me, it's. Okay, so here's my opinion on that plane. I think it's start. I think it, they're starting to to jump the shark a little bit. I mean, it's it's such a specialized thing, and yeah, I'm not I'm not sure it's needed. Yeah, it's five. It's fifty. It's five hundred dollars. Yeah. And let's see. What is it? Where does it say what it weighs? Just over nine pounds. Yeah. Uh, the 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 biggest benefit to that plane is the skewed frog. Yeah. Because that's see. the that's the thing that you that and the weight are the things you couldn't replicate by having a nice number five. Number, number five. Number five doesn't weigh nine pounds, does it? No, I'm saying the uh, skewed frog and the weight of the fifty-one are the only things, are the only advantages of just using like a number. Oh, five. sure. Right. Um. So to me, that that plane is kind of jumping the shark. Yeah, uh, you you get a better grip with that the tote there. Okay. So to take an old number five and. And put a skewed handle on it somehow. Sure. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's it's starting to get into the you know single use stuff. <laughs> Scott means yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I actually don't even use a shooting board, but that's one plane that I do want. <laughs> Go figure. Mm. 
Yeah, functional artwork. That's a great way to describe Conrad's work. Um, so, Scott, I don't think... I think what you need to do, Scott, is make a really good wooden plane for a shooting board that weighs just more than nine pounds so that you beat the 51 and you also skew your frog. That would be an awesome wood plane. Wow. I'm sorry. That Shivers. would be an awesome wood plane. I don't know how you'd make it that heavy. You'd probably have to hollow out the body and like melt some lead into it and then cap it or something. But It's going to be 10 feet long, Matt. Yeah, it might be. It might it's be. It's coming. I think it's uh, HNT Gordon who's got a, a a wooden shooting board plane and it's got a handle that comes out the top, or out the side of the plane, which is the top side like a dowel. So you grip the dowel and you go forward and backwards with that. Yeah. Well, some of these guys sell these hot dogs that you can put on regular planes right? so that you have a, a handle. But if I had a dedicated, if I did a lot of shooting and I wanted a dedicated shooting plane, um, then I don't think it would be that hard to contrive some handle contraption if I needed to. And even take off the regular handle and just get it out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, James, when you go to the Lee Nielsen event, um, ask him for a free hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> ask him if they can make you a corn dog. Okay, so they're going to have American period furniture makers there. M.S. Bickford, Tico Vogt, Peter Follinsby. So that sounds like a great event. Yeah. That, yeah, that'll be awesome. Oh, that that's, will be sounds awesome. Excellent. All right, I saw a picture that Tico posted. Um, Tico is the maker of the, the shooting board, the Super Shoot. Yep. Uh, at Shoot, C-H-U-T-E. And um, I guess he had business cards printed or... I'm not sure if he actually got them printed or whether they were just um, an image of the. He just had an image of them, but um, the H in shoot was omitted, so it said vote super cute. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. <laughs> that was just so funny. Here, I got something to show Scott. Scott, this is this is for you. This is my um, my Hawk wooden block plane kit that I've owned for over a year that I still haven't put together, including the brass dowel that I intend to use. So, um, I bought this from Ron and Linda in Portland last year, and I still haven't had the time to put it together, but I will. And that will not weigh 51 pounds. Mm -hmm. A 16-pound Coco Bolo joiner. That is crazy. Um, so I wanted to remind you, Chris, that next Wednesday, not to rub it in, I will be in St. John's, U.S. Virgin Islands, um, okay. enjoying cervezas with my wife and her, as her friend gets married. So I will not be at Woodchat next week. All right. But I will be um, back the week after that for Woodchat. Um, I do plan on, over Christmas break, getting caught up on some of the Woodchat-related business on the website and and creating the event reminders on Google and stuff like that. But I do think it is time to get a new set of topics and speakers lined up. So, Yeah, yeah I guess we're both guilty of uh, yeah. letting that go. But yeah, sounds like a good plan. Right on. Oh my gosh, Scott actually saw the cards that said Super yeah. Cute. I think it would be great to get a card from Tico Vote that said, Hi, I'm Tico, and I'm super cute. Because he, is, he uh, is a super cute guy, isn't he? Super cute. That did too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. So what is the 62? Uh, hello, that's their low angle track. I should have known that. Oh, they just didn't they just come out with that? No, they've had the low angle for a long time. New angle, uh, low angle jackrabbit plane. It's new. Uh, low angle jack. The jackrabbit's a separate one. Oh, uh, sorry. Veritas has the low angle jackrabbit. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I like this low angle jackrabbit from Lee Nielsen. I like that. Does, does Lee Nielsen have a, 
the Jackrabbit? They do. It's England? brand new. Okay. I know they have a, the, the 10, I think it is. Yeah, they, Lee Nielsen calls this the 610. Okay. 12, and 12 degree uh, bed on the blade. It's got the knickers on the side. Screen share. Sorry. Yes, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, I was getting too busy coveting this thing. Let's see. Do you see it? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Now, is there a provision for a fence on that plane? Let's look. Doesn't look like it. Mm. It doesn't look like there is a provision for offense. Score one for the Canadians. <laughs> um, posting a link to Derek Cohen's review of uh, the Veritas Jackrabbit plane. Um, mostly because he's got a really clever modification that allows it to be used with the shooting board. Really? Let's see that. Let's see that. Because, uh, of course, um, if the blade extends all the way to the edge, then it'll just eat away your shooting board and you lose all accuracy. Right. There's the link. You want to scroll down about halfway. Uh, you put the link side. in the uh, chat room there? I did. Yeah, I'll screen share here, too. Not there yet, but... Um, there you go. Yeah, obviously there's a fence that attaches here to the side. Yep. It'll go to either side. Shooting board. There you go. So he's got the tote at an angle here. And what he does, this is brilliant. He took a piece of wood, straight, flat, and two, uh, I think they're 1032 machine screws. Oh, and those are the, the same fence threads. Holes. That go into the fence holes. Yeah. Nice. So he gets this here. The plane sitting on its sole in this picture here. So you, yep. you tip you tip it up and then you get you get on the shooting board. That, right, that's, and the that's cool brilliant. thing that gives him is um, he actually gets uh, two reference edges on that fence. He gets the one adjacent to the piece that he's cutting. And he gets the one opposite, and it looks like he's got that trapped in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That so is just like, cool. just like the fifty-one, which is actually another benefit of it, is that yeah. it's trapped; it can't slide to the right. So it's moving in a, in a true linear fashion. Wow. Okay, I have to screen share right now. I'm going to cut my screen share here. Oh, <laughs> nice picture, Scott. That is beautiful. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Sixteen. Wow. Pounds. How long is that? Thirty-six, I think. This is Stuarter. You're still screen sharing that, by the way. Yeah. Sixteen pounds. That uh, num no, nine pounds for the fifty-one. 16 pounds for a plane? Uh, yikes. That, that Coco Bolo joiner is ridiculously gorgeous. I think Matt needs one. There, there you go, Matt. There's an item for your Christmas list. Yeah. I don't deserve it. I'm on Santa's bad list. Only woodworkers who actually do woodworking once a month, at least. How long was it, Scott? Tell me how long that thing was. 36. That is just ridiculous. Yeah, that's a lot of weight to be pushing around. Coco Bolo, geez. Yeah, so I've never worked with Coco Bolo. What is the nastiness with Coco Bolo? O oily. And it's a hard wood too. Okay, so it's not the, it's not like uh 
bloodwood where the dust gives you freckles all over your arms or oh well it's all well, the oils if you're allergic to it it, it can do that okay or worse um it's a highly toxic toxic wood um if you're sensitive to that sort of yeah. thing i don't i don't get any ill effects but i don't work with it a whole lot Uh, only making one more scot is of that Coca-Cola joint and it's promised to someone. So. Yeah, I don't want a 36-inch one. I want a 37-inch one. <laughs> <laughs> that way I win. So, Okay, it is 8 o'clock. Um, I need to wrap up and help get my daughter to bed. And then after that, I'm going to sneak back down here. Um, so just a reminder, Chris, will you be doing Woodchat next week or... You going to yes. be around to help it? Okay. Yes, I should be. So there will be a wood chat next week, uh, same time, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, typically right after the MWA Live uh, podcast. Today they had um, Andy Chidwick on there. I believe their live podcasts are every other week, I believe. Oh, so they won't be next week, but they'll be the week after. All right. And I know that Wood Talk is now every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific as well, um, last I heard. And then... Uh, Week after that, I will be back for Wood Chat, and we will be uh, back on the air at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. So, mm -hmm. thanks everybody for coming to Wood Chat tonight. We know we asked you about your Christmas list, and sounds like everybody's got everything they want. They didn't really have anything for the Christmas list. Um, anyway, I'm Matt Gradwall from uh, Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me at uppercutwoodworks.com or on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. Signing off, and Chris. Yeah, um, Chris. You can find me at Flare Woodworks on Twitter or at FlareWoodworks.com. Cool. So thanks, everybody, for coming by. And Chris, we'll see you next week, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Absolutely. Adios. See you guys.